It's been habitualized. My habits been criticized. But this dank keeps me more sane than you realize. I'm a chronic user. I'm not an abuser. Thanks for rolling up. I'm Two Blunt Marley. And this is Certified Pothead. Smoking on one of my uh, nighttime. Nighttime spliffs. You know you about to do Bird Club. You about to take a look at these cannabis conspiracy theories which i like to call cannabis conspiracy theories tonight's theory involves the witches of salem or the uh salem witch trials um so let's kick this off folks um once once upon a time in a land full of suspicious steeples and pointy hats the puritans found themselves in the middle of a panic not just any panic this was no regular run-of-the-mill I don't know someone left the soup on too long kind of frenzy. No, this was the kind of freak out that makes people think the neighbors are flying on broomsticks, tossing curses like frisbees, and brewing up trouble in cauldrons. And what was it all really about? Well, my friends, brace yourself, because I'm about to tell you that the Salem witch trials were actually an early anti-cannabis crackdown. That's right, peeps. The real witches weren't casting spells. They were rolling joints. It's time to face... The Grim Wars. Salem's was less double double toil you in trouble and more puff puff pass and panic. We all know the Puritans were tighter than the witch's corset. These folks were so uptight, even their shadows had wrinkles. Fun was not only frowned upon, it was downright excommunicated. Puritans believed that a good time was something only witches and maybe a particularly rebellious cow when Dodge then. So when the good people of Salem started cracking, gotta stop saying words, started catching the scent of something skunky in the air, they didn't stop to think, hey, maybe we should chill out and see what's up. No, they immediately assumed Satan was ho in hosting words, bruh. Hosting the potluck and everybody was invited to the gallows. I mean, come on, bruh. If these folks found a broom standing in the corner, they'd yell witch. Faster than you could say sweepstakes. They probably burn sage to keep sage vice away. But what if all this witch hysteria was less about hexes and more about herbs? They just didn't know what was potentially growing in those cauldrons. Here's a riddle for you. A fly without wings, my broom is my steed. I cackle at night and cast spells with speed. With hat tall and pointy, I roam the night air. What am I that causes such fright and despair? Let's talk about the so-called witches. The witches of Salem. These weren't your cackling, wart-nosed, eye newt tossing villains from a bad fairy tale. No, most of them were actually practicing herbalists. Those folks who could look at a garden and see endless possibilities. You know, the original plant-based influencers. They were the type to make a poultice for your aching joints and maybe... Just maybe a little something extra for rolling joints. They were herbal medicine pioneers. Safe to say these witches were more likely to be whipping up potions to treat a headache than casting curses to give you one. But to the Puritans, if you even had the audacity to know what herbology was, you were basically signing up for the local witch burning. A woman tending her herb garden. Well, clearly she was working on a new spell. Mixing up some tea. Must be a potion for eternal youth. Growing cannabis, witchcraft. Clearly not some excellent stress relief for all those rigid rules and dress codes. Here's another riddle for you. With potions and herbs, I stir in my pot. What I conjure up, you may like or may not. An eye of newt, a tail of rat. Tell me, what am I bubbling with a hat? Okay, bro, imagine the scene. It's dark, windy night. The moon is full and somewhere in the woods. There's a group of witches gathering around a fire. To the Puritan onlooker, it looks like they're performing some satanic seance, conjuring spirits and tossing ingredients into a bubbling cauldron. But let's be honest, what if they were really just brewing up a batch of cannabis tea and having a good laugh? Maybe the only thing elevating them was a strong strain and that broomstick. Probably just the Puritan version of a delivery scooter. They weren't flying on it, they were using it to sweep away the bad vibes. See, when you're a Puritan, everything fun is outlawed. A group of people chilling by a fire sipping some special tea is about as terrifying as it gets. Who needs ghosts when a puff of something herbal 
can send you to a paranoia you spiral so hard you accuse your next door neighbor of becoming Beelzebub for a poker night. Here's another riddle. I glide on the wind with the night as my guide. I'm often mistaken for a witches who ride. My feathers are black. I let out a hoot. What am I that makes witches feel astute? So the witches weren't really flying on brooms. But what if the whole broomstick rumor was just a cover up for an early version of the ultimate hot box session? Think about it. The great hunt for witches could have been a case of people getting a whiff of some very questionable herbs in the air, assuming it was magic when it was just a strong sativa. Or those accusations, let's be real, probably based on someone getting way too paranoid that they're hitting a bit too much of the good stuff. Instead of witches casting spells, it was more like witches casting clouds. The trials weren't about sorcery at all. It was just a town in full-blown reefer madness, minus the ability to chill out. The town elders were like, that's not oregano, and thus the panic began. Another riddle. Brewed in secret, in dark and cold, with whispers and chants from times of old, drink me for power, or drink me for woe. What am I that makes your strength grow? Imagine the town gossip. I never saw 